Hey everybody, so today I'd like to discuss this follow-up, this response that Apple gave to this service error, and I do call it an error, in their battery health app. So let's just go over what it is they said here. They said, we take the safety of our customers very seriously and want to make sure any battery replacement is done properly. There are now over 1,800 authorized service providers across the United States. So our customers have even more convenient access to quality repairs. Last year, we introduced a new feature to notify customers if we were unable to verify that a new, genuine battery was installed by a certified technician following Apple repair processes. This information is there to help protect our customers from damage, poor quality, or used batteries which can lead to safety or performance issues. This notification does not impact the customer's ability to use the phone after an unauthorized repair. And my, my issue with this mainly came with the use of the word service to the point where the, the battery application, in my opinion, was not well engineered. It was well engineered if you'd like it to be a fear-mongering tool, in my opinion. I don't think it was well engineered if it's actually designed to tell you the health of the battery. If you take a brand new iPhone XS from the store, you never turn it on, you got no cycles in that battery, you take that battery out and you put it into your phone, it's still going to give you the service error. So when I read over here, it says this information is there to help protect our customers from used batteries. Well, you're not even telling if the battery is used or new because you, you're not bothering to do any of that. You're not actually checking the health of it so much as you're just saying, was it installed by somebody that we have anointed and said is worthy to install a battery into a phone? And if they hasn't, then, then it that doesn't work. And I just find this really, really interesting, particularly because about two years ago, I did a video titled, What Does Authorized Repair Do? Let's find out where I called a bunch of authorized repair centers. And funny thing, it, real, imagine that. It's, they did not know that the charge port is not soldered to the motherboard. They thought the charging port was soldered to the motherboard when we were asking them about fixing a phone that has an issue with the headphone jack. No. Unfortunately not. The headphone jack is basically hard soldered directly into the logic board. Okay, so you're, so the hard, you're saying that on the iPhone 6, the headphone jack is hard soldered, it's soldered directly on the motherboard? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not on a separate cable that then connects to the motherboard? Mm, I don't believe so, no. Oh. Huh. It's not, it's not one no, of the parts I, that I, they yeah, supply. It's one thing if you don't want to replace the headphone jack. It's one thing if you don't want to replace the docking port because you're lazy or whatever. But the fact that you don't even know that the charge port is not soldered to the board, and that's the group of people that are going to get access to a tool to calibrate the battery that I can't get, that's where I draw the line. Now, what I find, the next thing I find interesting about this whole debacle is how this entire situation appears to be doing the exact opposite of what Apple would like it to do. Apple would like this information to protect customers from damage, poor quality, or used products, which can lead to safety or performance issues. And this is one of those things where I think they're actually going to be doing the opposite of it. See, if you release a battery health app that is not actually a battery health app, but rather some sort of battery detective app, which tries to tell if somebody else uh, put a battery in the phone, some sort of battery espionage app, and try to pretend that it's health, what people are going to do when they see that service thing is people are going to learn after reading about this, after learning about this, after experiencing it themselves, to ignore the error. And the last thing that you want drivers to do is to start putting a piece of tape over the check engine light because the check engine light always shows up even if all you did was have somebody wash your windows that day. This is, you're conditioning people to ignore the service thing because it shows up under circumstances under which service is not required. So if you want to maintain credibility and say, hey, you know, you really shouldn't use this brand of charger because if you use this brand of charger, it may send 110 volts to your iPhone because of poor internal wiring. Well, you just condition people to believe that service doesn't actually mean anything because you say service even if there's an original new battery in there from another phone. So what, about, what happens when you actually have a legitimate reason to pull out the safety card but nobody believes you? What happens when you, somebody actually does put a very bad, dangerous battery from a known bad supplier into that phone that actually has a chance of blowing up into the future, and everybody's just ignoring this little service thing because you designed it so poorly that it, it shows up in all these number of circumstances that normal people are going to be in every day, even if they went to a reputable place. People are going to ignore it, and then they're going to ignore you 
when it comes to actual safety concerns, real bad things, real bad third-party parts, real bad third-party chargers. It very much so reminds me of the whole abstinence debate when it comes to sexual education. You know, are you going to just teach abstinence, don't have sex until, until you're married, don't, never have sex ever? Or are you going to teach the actual ramifications of it? What an STD is, what condoms are, what birth control is, what an IUD is, what the pill is, what the patch is, how they work, how this stuff operates. Um, if, you know, what conversation should you have before being intimate with somebody and how should you feel about it before doing it and what should the red flags be where you go I'm not going to do that with you now whether or not you are somebody that believes in no sex before marriage or whether you were somebody that was given blowjobs in the locker room in high school I think we can all agree that if you don't give people the information and they wind up doing the stuff anyway that they're going to be worse off than if they had the information it's going to be difficult to control what people do but it is simple to give people information that allows them to make informed decisions about what they do. What happens if you preach abstinence only? A bunch of teenage single moms. Whereas the same thing is going on here, whereas if you preach only go to the Apple store to get your battery, or it will say service, is you're encouraging people to essentially ignore what you're saying when you say service to the point that the service icon is not going to have a meaning anymore, where you're, you're really not... You're, you're not doing anything with this other than getting people to ignore when it says service. And I understand where people are coming from when they say... I really want a way to know if somebody else put a different screen into this. I want a way to tell if somebody put a different battery into this. I buy stuff on the used market as well. This LG phone that I have here, I paid about $300 for this G8 because I don't, I don't want to pay over $300 for a phone. I'm a cheapskate, and I, did, and I can find stuff used. I'd really like a way to know what type of battery is in here. Was the screen replaced? Was it a good screen or a bad screen? But that's different than having a situation where if anybody other than the OEM did anything to it, we're just going to say it's effed up, service. There's a big difference there. And one of the reasons that very, very few people have, um, have, have sympathy for Apple here is because of all the companies to do this, this is a company that has taken steps every single step of the way to make it more difficult for people to work on their devices, whether we're talking about the proprietary screw sets, whether we're talking about removing the internal diagnostics from the machine, whether we're talking about making ASD not accessible by normal people, but now having to log into a GSX server, whether we're talking about soldering in the SSD, whether we're talking about the T2 chip, whether we're talking about the fact that the system management controller is uh, a chip that if you try to read or write the programming from a, from a good one to a blank one that you want to put on the board because it died from somebody replacing their own battery, the chip effing kills itself like the terrorists in 24 that would drink cyanide before Jack Bauer could get to them. It's, they have a history of this, which is why I don't think it's fair to call it a lock, because a lock is not what it is. And I think that the sensationalist blogs, bloggers that pretend that they're journalists are doing when they call it a lock. But I understand why people don't necessarily trust them, and they haven't done anything to really build up trust. The last thing to discuss here is the difference between somebody with whom I simply have a disagreement on a company's policy or a stance on something and somebody that's riding that company's cock. So uh, there are many people who are going to disagree with me or are going to point out, well, on this issue, you're not considering this part of it or on that part issue, you're not considering uh, that part of it. And I, I completely respect and understand how there are many people that may disagree with me. The Jessa disagrees with me. I do not think that she's writing Apple's cock. But then there are some people that just go a little bit, I don't know, I, th I really under don't understand what the makes this mentality come about. But when you read comments like this, are you really that broke that saving a few dollars in a battery is more important than security? If you'd spend as much time trying to find a job as you have complaining about this, you might be able to buy a new phone and not care. Anyone else want to start a GoFundMe to buy this guy a battery and get him to shut up? I mean, I find it strange when people take criticism of the practices of a company as a direct attack on them and then start to attack the individual criticizing that company. You're not a majority Apple stockholder. This is the, the only way I can imagine somebody having that type of opinion or having that type of really vehement response is you're a majority Apple stockholder. You are fundamentally that offended that somebody is criticizing an aspect of the business. But curious for your opinions on the entire matter. What do you think? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something. And above all, just remember that at the end of the day, they take the safety of their customers very seriously and want to make sure that the battery replacement is done properly.